Tajuddin Subki, one of our great scholars, he has a book on the Hispa, Mu'id and Ni'am, Mamubid and Niqam, perpetuating the blessings and eliminating the things that will call you, cause you remorse or regret. In that book, he, he, he records the instructions to the person who's going to stucco the walls of the city. So in the Middle East, many of the walls were stuccoed, and still they use stucco. He said, before you stucco the wall, inspect it very carefully to ensure that no birds or animals have made their nest therein. Because were you to plaster them in, I would be responsible for their death and answerable to Allah on the Day of Judgment. This is how our cities and living spaces were organized. These are the kind of instructions that our public officials were given at one time. Uh, a few years ago, I um, started a little uh, email list called Muslims Going Green. And my idea was that instead of talking about the environment, because the assumption was that everyone in the list was dedicated to the environment. And as, as Imam Zaid said, unlike many other aspects of our deen, being environmental is not something you can really just give a khutbah about and you're done. Uh, I was once at a, a picnic where they actually had the slogan on their t-shirts, something like Muslims are green, well, I'm not going to say it, but anyway. Um, and they were serving the lunch on a styrofoam. So the slogan just doesn't cut it. You have to actually live it. So the, the job is to, I think, in terms of speaking about this topic and, and how it applies to education is getting people to understand that concept is that nature performs a job. It does, it has a function. And when you interrupt the function, it throws the entire body into, into disarray. And then now what, you fi what you're finding is you're dealing with the results of the tearing apart of the body. So what we have to do in terms of, in terms of the education that we have to foster and encourage is we have to teach people how the body works. And then you have to teach them how to put it back together. Look at this. Allah says in the Quran, Allah SWT says that everything glorifies Him that is in the heavens and the earth. And the bird, all of them know their He uses the word salat. And he uses the word tasbih, which is glorification. Combine that with another verse. That everything glorifies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but yet you do not comprehend the glorification. What right then, beyond the beauty, what right then is due to this creation that one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chose to bring out of a state of non-existence into a state of existence? That in itself necessi necessitates the respect, my respect for that thing. Once that is established, then it is not a question of fiqh. It's a question of love. Because I love what God loves. I think... For, for myself, there are a couple uh, anecdotes that help illustrate why, why I continue doing this work, why I'm motivated. Um, what, one is uh, just a, a, a beautiful fact that I found that I, I recently learned that it, in the soil that we touch with our bare hands, there is a bacteria, I believe it's called my mycobacterium, that when it comes into contact with our bare hands, it actually increases the serotonin in our brains. It actually increases the sense of joy in ourselves. And I, and I just found that to be such a, a beautiful call from Allah to come back to our nature, both our human nature and the signs around us. My, a lot of my family are Christians, and one thing that Christians do incredibly well is that they tell stories of transformation. They tell current, modern, stories of real people, 
real stories of real human beings that people can identify with and connect with. Muslims, we never do that. What I would argue for, and I would argue for, for the panel to think about, for the people in the room, for the educators, to tell inspirational stories of transformation that have ecologically relevant meanings. So fold the, the, ecologically, the ecological ideas, fold the Muslim environmental, fold those ideas into your conversations. Don't make it overtly, this is about the environment. I'm going to beat this over the head. You green fool. You got to be green. But to figure out a way to blend that stuff into these stories of transformation in a way so that our young people are infused with them from the very beginning. So the idea of transformation and the idea of this, uh, this, these inspirational stories of contemporary people are real people that they can connect with. So the environmental uh, 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 activism has a deep and profound um, connection and experience for the human being uh, and we will speak about that obviously in the next few days uh, and also I want to mention that uh, we have to realize that when we're speaking about the environment we we should not really only be speaking about the natural environment there are many other kinds of environments in fact we have the economic environment we have the social environment and obviously we have the spiritual environment so we are continually, uh, continuously disconnecting ourselves as the human being when we are only speaking about the natural environment. This is all what the ancients knew, that everything is related. And now th this science has yet to be really incorporated into the Western worldview because they, they know that it's all related, but they act as if it's all fragmented. They act as if what we do here doesn't have any effect anywhere else. Even though they're, even their hard sciences are pointing towards a, a holistic uh, perspective. You know, when we started this project um, and Dr. Salim came to us, we really wanted to do it, but we didn't know how we were going to pull it off because of um, um, where, we, where we're at in our uh, resources as an organization, as a startup, the kinds of priorities that we have. But we really wanted to support this program because, you know, that's part of what a college does, is it brings people together and it facilitates networking, the generation of ideas. It's not just about transmitting wisdom from the past, but it's about contextualizing that wisdom for today, living by it and generating hope for tomorrow.